Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's lesson is DIY SEO, or more importantly, 12 individual steps that you can take for your own website in order to get it ranking higher in the Google search results. Now everyone wants to be on the top position in Google or on page one, position one, whatever it might be. But there are things that you need to do to your website in order to help you get there. Now what I'm gonna be sharing with you today are 12 actionable individual steps that you can take I recommend you potentially taking them over the next 12 days, so one step per day, and then you're gonna see positive return on your time investment in say one to two months time. So if you haven't noticed, I'm actually wearing a Christmas jumper. You know, I'm recording this in December, it's actually December the 7th. The weather's horrible outside, but I'm trying to get festive, so the Christmas jumper's on. Now before we jump into these 12 steps, if you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification too, and you'll be notified of any future releases around SEO or web design or improving your web design business. And also, please let me know down in the comments whether you have implemented SEO into your business, whether it's working for you, uh, I'd love to know. Just let me know down in the comments. Now we've been having some huge success with some of our clients in the agency with regards to SEO. We are generating them lots of organic traffic, which as a result has meant that they don't have to spend money on paid advertisement or they can spend significantly less and still get a great return. And that's exactly what we love doing. We love increasing the natural organic traffic to not only our own website, but our clients' websites as well. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 12 DIY SEO steps that you can implement into your own business that we do on a regular basis that has seen a very positive return on our investment in terms of time and effort spent in generating these organic results. So let's go. Okay, so the first one is keyword research. Now you need to know exactly what search terms you want to be appearing for within the Google search. Okay, so what this means is when you type in a string of words into the Google search, that is called a keyword. Okay, so it's not necessarily one individual word. It could be a string of characters. That is what we call a keyword. Now it's important that you don't just guess this part because you'll get it wrong and then you will never rank essentially. Okay, so examples of keywords are, for example, best gym in Bristol or we've got corporate lawyer in London. So you'll see there are two different keywords. And you'll notice that it's not just one individual word, it's actually a, a combination of words that build up a search term. So a search term is essentially what we call a keyword. Now you need to do your research, you need to understand what people are searching for, what's gonna give you the highest return on your efforts. For example, you don't wanna be spending all of your time and effort trying to rank for a search term that no one is even searching for. So you have to do your research. Now you can use tools like Ubersuggest or SEMrush, which is gonna allow you to do your keyword research and it will tell you pretty accurately what the average monthly search figures are for each keyword that you want to potentially rank for. Now the next thing is one keyword per page. Okay, you must only assign one topic or keyword to a single page. Like you can actually have pages that list all of your services, but that must be linking through to a single page for each of those services. Okay, so for example, within our company, we have a individual page for SEO. Okay, and our keyword for that page is actually SEO Exeter. Now, if we wanted to target another city, such as Plymouth, another local city to us, we would then have to create a new individual landing page for that keyword, okay? So we end up with two separate landing pages for two separate keywords. Now, we actually have multiple services, as I'm sure many of you do. So we have website design, we have e-commerce, we have uh, Google paid advertisement. Again, each one of those page will have its own individual keyword. Now, as I've just said, you can actually have pages with multiple keywords assigned to it. So such as a services page that lists out all of your services, but each of those individual services on that page must link through to a unique landing page, which has been assigned an individual keyword. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now I've seen quite often in the past that people try and assign like two, three, four, five, or six keywords to an individual page. And if you're trying to you know, funnel a bunch of keywords into an individual page, Google's not really gonna know what that topic is about. And therefore, it's gonna struggle to rank you. Okay, so next up, we've got use keywords in the correct places. Right, the keywords that you're targeting for a single page should appear in the following areas, making it clear for the search engine to know what it is all about, right? But make sure you don't spam, okay? So you need to put the keywords in the right places, 
All right, make sure that they're distributed across the page evenly across the multiple things that we're about to cover but don't spam okay you don't want to be putting keywords like every few words because it, it needs to be readable it needs to make sense to the reader and therefore it's going to make sense to google which is a robot all right so where do you put these keywords well first of all you want it in your content okay so that includes things like your page titles your headings your body text links images all right Next, you wanna include it within your URL. Okay, so the URL is the string of characters that come after your domain name. So if, for example, within our agency, if we were looking to rank for SEO Exeter, within our URL, it would say tristanparker.co.uk forward slash SEO hyphen Exeter. Okay, so you can see that our keyword that we're trying to target is within our URL. Next, you wanna make sure that your keywords are within your images, and this actually goes for not only the name of your images, actually goes for the alt tags as well. Okay, so you don't wanna be naming your JPEG images or PNGs with a random you know, combination of characters that just doesn't make sense. You wanna actually name it to include your keyword. Now, next is your links. So any buttons or hyperlinks and things like that, they need to be clearly labeled and include your keyword where possible. Now, as we've already said, keywords need to appear in your content. But another thing that you need to consider is actually you need to have a decent word count on your page. Okay, it needs to be between four to 500 plus characters. Uh, typically, 500 plus is a good metric to go off. But what I like to do is actually look at competitors that are already ranking high for the keywords you want to be ranking for. Take a look at how many characters they've got on their page and either try to match it or beat it. That's, that's a very good rule of thumb to follow. Now finally, any videos that are on your page, whether it's a YouTube embed or whether you just uploaded it directly, make sure that it's named correctly and includes your keyword as well. Okay, so my battery just died. So the background may have readjusted, who knows, but uh, unfortunately that happens sometimes. Uh, let's keep going. All right, so the next thing that you wanna look at is using keyword variations, okay? so. So Google tries to understand the topic of your page just like a human being would, okay? So it's quite natural that when you, as a human, explaining something that you, you would explain it in perhaps different ways, use different words, and more importantly, use synonyms. Okay, so including synonyms and other variations of your main keyword within your content. If you're ever stuck with finding variations of your keyword, the best thing that you can do is put your keyword into Google, search, Go right down to the bottom, and when you'll see the suggested search terms, take inspiration from that, include that within your content. Okay, so next up we've got anchor text. All right, so the anchor text is any clickable link on the website, be it a hyperlink, navigation item, or button. Make sure that the label, the, which is the words containing the actual link, make sure that it's relevant to where the hyperlink is going. So if, for example, someone was on our website looking to book an SEO strategy call, our link would say something like, book an SEO strategy call. You wouldn't wanna use something like click here, which is, is just incredibly vague. I see so many websites you know, plastering either click here or learn more you know, within the hyperlinks and it doesn't really give a human, let alone Google, any real context as to where that link is going to go. So make sure that you, you use proper text within your links and make sure that you get your keyword in there as well. Another example is learn more about SEO keywords. Okay, so instead of using something like learn more, you could say something like learn more about SEO keywords, okay? Next up, we've got killing off your old pages. Now, if your website has been around for a while and it's got a lot of content, whether it is products or blog pages that have just been around for years and years, they don't really get any more traffic. You just wanna get rid of them. You wanna be sure to delete them because Google doesn't want to rank websites with low quality old content, okay? It only wants to rank new, fresh content, relevant websites. And if, if you've got a bunch of old pages, it's honestly gonna be letting you down. If they're not generating traffic, just cut them off, kill them, get rid of them. Now, following on from that, you wanna keep your content fresh, okay? Google likes to serve up relevant content, as I've just explained. So you wanna make sure that you are regularly updating areas of your website that have not been reviewed in a few months, okay? So this could be any aspect of your website, whether it's a blog article that hasn't been updated for a few months, 
go in, make some tweaks, make it, you know, update it, make it relevant again, and it will it will boost up in rankings again. Same goes for some of your service-based or product pages. Okay, if you haven't updated any of the content on them, just go in, you know, every now and then, once a month, for example, make some changes, and and refresh that content. Refreshing content doesn't have to just strictly be about refreshing text. You could refresh your imagery, you could refresh your videos, you know, if you are in a creative industry and you have a portfolio, for example, you can refresh the, the visual content where, where necessary. If you have an online store, you could refresh the product photography. You know, there's loads of things that you can be doing to refresh your content. Next, I want you to get a Google business listing. Now you might already have this, but if you don't, go get one honestly it's the most valuable thing that you could possibly do so make sure that you have your own business listed on gmb otherwise google my business this is essential for those who have a local service-based business and want to be found on the google map results so what that means is when you do your google search and you scroll down and you see the map and you see a bunch of businesses within that map you will never appear there if you don't have a Google business listing. And Google's clever enough to understand where the individual is searching from. And if you're located closely to it and you're on the map, you're gonna be served up within that map. So that's a great way to get local traffic to your website. Next, look at Google verified reviews. Okay, there are so many businesses out there that either don't have a Google business listing, but if they do, they are not taking advantage of Google reviews. Now, Google reviews are great because it tells Google directly that you're credible. If you have a high star rating, you know, you're credible, people should trust you, and therefore it's gonna start boosting you up the ranks. So be sure to collect as many verified Google reviews as possible from previous clients or customers. This will, as I've already said, build confidence with your new potential customers, which is so, so important. So next we've got name, address, and phone, otherwise known as NAP. Okay, this, this is a term that is used within SEO. Now, if you're not sure what it means, you now know it is name, address, and phone number. Now, this again is really, really important, more so for consistency. So make sure wherever your NAP is presented that it remains consistent. Okay, Google looks at this information when deciding who to show for geo-targeted search queries. So a geo-targeted search query is anyone that is searching for potentially a service within a location. So again, search engine optimization in Exeter, which is where I'm based, that would be a geo-targeted search query. Or another example would be if someone is searching skateboarding shops in London, then if you're that skateboarding shop, you wanna make sure that your name, address, and phone number is consistent, not only throughout the site, but anywhere else online. So that then brings us nicely onto local directories and citations, all right? So you wanna be taking advantage of local directories and citations, especially to boost your ranking in your local area. So local SEO, you need to be doing this stuff. Create listings on local directories that cite your business name, address, and phone number, NAP. Directories are the thing like Bing, Places, Yale, Yahoo, you, you name it. There's, there's loads out there. This again is important for ranking high on local search terms. All right, so if you're struggling to find directories, so if you're struggling for local directories, what I recommend you do is just search your city followed by local directories. Then you'll see a bunch of local directories that you can apply to and appear within. Now this is also great because not only does it help your NEP, it also helps you with backlinks. Okay, so backlinks are the links that you get back to your website. So another entity linking back to your website. The more that you have from you know websites or more credible websites, the more credible your website is going to look and therefore Google is going to trust it and it will boost up. Okay, you'll, you'll probably notice in a pattern here around trust and authenticity and relevancy. So it's, it's all, all really important. Now the final step that you need to take care of, and this is a big one, is all around your website speed. This is something that a lot of people struggle with and it doesn't really need to be that much of a challenge, okay? Now site speed is not only important for when it comes to your visitors wanting to have that information quickly or fast. It is now an important ranking factor for Google, especially the speed on your mobile device, okay? So Google has gone mobile first. They are looking at the, the content and the load times of your mobile rendering of your website. So you need to make sure that that is fast. Like be sure to test your site speed and work to get it below three seconds, okay? You want your site loading within three seconds. If you're using WordPress, there are a bunch of caching plugins and tools that will allow you 
to serve your website up faster. So be sure to check out your image sizes, content bloat, uh, your server or wherever your website's hosted, make sure that that is delivering your website fast. There's there's a bunch of things that you can do, but you need to make sure that your website loads fast. If it's more than three seconds, try and get it below three seconds. So there you have it, DIY SEO. They are the 12 essential steps that you need to take in order to start positively improving the ranks of your website on Google. Now, if you found this valuable, I would really, really appreciate it if you hit subscribe, hit the bell notification too, and you'll be notified of any future releases around website design or SEO. And don't forget to leave me a comment. I'd love to know how your SEO journey is going as well. There's an end screen coming up with more useful content for you. Make sure you check it out and I will see you in the next video. Bye.